Hello and welcome to another digital art tutorial where today we're going to go ahead and create this pastel bird design. Now today I'm going to be using Infinite Painter, however there's options available where you can go ahead and download the palette as an image if you like instead. So you can follow along in a different app of your choice. You'll just of course need to adapt the brushes as you go to fit the app that you're going to use. But all of the steps are pretty straightforward so you should be able to do exactly that. Now, as always, a massive thank you to all of my members of the channel who have been helping support the channel and the work that I do here. And if you want to become a member, you also get early access to these tutorials as well. So make sure to check that out using the link in the description down below. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and let's get started. So you'll be able to see today's canvas size of 2000 by 2000 and we'll hit the option of create. We're going to just zoom out a little bit because the first thing we do is go to our create tools. We're going to go to perspective and we're going to add in a grid. And all we want to do is just drag this dot here. Now, if you don't see that dot, you may have to turn on and off the magnet like so. You want to just drag it into the bottom right corner. I've just got that set up for you just so that you can see my screen when you're creating your content. And you can, if you use the grid, you can see where to lay things out accordingly. Now, once you've dragged it into the corner, make sure you turn off the magnet. So you're just about to be able to see all these sort of thin lines here on the screen. Now, for me, I'm going to be going ahead and go to my colors. I'm going to be going to the option here. And I'm going to be using the Pastel Birds palette here for today's design. Now for you, depending on what you're doing, you may need to go ahead and do a few different things. First of all, you'll obviously want to import the actual palette. I'll leave a link to a video on how to do that in the description down below. And then obviously, alternatively, if you're using a different app, you're going to have to work out how you get your colors in, whether that means going to your app somewhere and going, for example, up to the three dots, going to the option of import and importing the image of the palette as a reference potentially. So again, different apps will have different processes. What you really want to have set up though is in settings, you just want to make sure that you have long press set to eyedropper. That way you'll be able to hold down on the reference image and you'll be able to grab a color. That's pretty much the same process for every app that we have available to us in the digital art space. So we've got our colors set, we've got everything ready to go, let's crack on. So let's get started. We're going to go up to our create options. We're going to go to the option of gradient. And we're going to use the option of linear and we're going to drag down in the center of the screen in a straight line down to around about here. The top dot, you want to tap on it. You'll then get the option to select a color from your palette and we want to select this teal color here. We're then going to add another dot and another dot. So you can see where they're positioned there against the grid. And if you tap on the dot, you'll be able to change it to a different color. So pink, the next dot down, tap on that and change it to the option of the orange and the bottom color again tap on that and change that to pink as well. So that way you get a lovely spectrum of all the different colors for our design. You just wanna bring the orange maybe a little lower down just below that point. And let's go ahead and probably bring the blue down a little bit by bringing the pink down. Once you're done, hit the tick. Again, if you're using a different app, just use the soft airbrush and go left to right and just paint that in. Now, just to triple check it sort of blended fully, I'm just gonna go up to my create options. I'm gonna to go to the option of edit and I'm just gonna go ahead and add a filter of structure and blur. That way I can just triple check they're all blended together. So I can just add a bit more blur and hit the tick when I'm done. I've maxed out the blur on that one. Now let's go ahead and draw in the sun. Let's create a new layer. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to our brushes. We're gonna to go to fills and we're gonna use the solid fill. We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab a color from our palette. So we're going to go to our palette. We're going to grab this light orangey tone here. So this color here. And we're going to go ahead and go up to our tools, shapes and circle. And then you can just drag out, creating a circle for your sun. And I'm going to position it a little bit higher. I'm going to pop it around about here. And then when you're done, just tap on the circle tool when you're done. Let's go ahead and erase the bottom of it. So we'll just go to our eraser, tap on our eraser and go to the option of we're going to go to sprayers and the soft brush. So you need like a soft airbrush for this. So soft airbrush, you can see from my settings here, they're a little bit reduced. So keep an eye on these numbers here and maybe adapt yours accordingly. Again, I'll just show you those 76, 64. And we're just going to make the size nice and large, probably around about 400, if not bigger than that again, maybe five to 600. And just at the bottom, left to right, fade out, do another coat of erasing. And you just want to kind of blend it out leaving the top nice and light and the bottom really faint. There we go. Now you can optionally add in some clouds here as well. I'm going to go ahead and skip over them, maybe add them at the end. So just keep an eye out for that towards the end of the tutorial. 
Let's move on to our fencing. So let's create a new layer. We're gonna go ahead and go to our colors. We're gonna grab this deep purple color here. And we're gonna go ahead and draw in the rectangle option. So we're gonna to go to shapes and rectangle. And then we just wanna go ahead and draw in our horizontal beam. So we're gonna go across here. We don't wanna make it too big. And something around about that looks pretty good. And then we can tap on our square rectangle tool when we're done. We'll then create another new layer and we'll add in the next element of the fence. So we're gonna continue with the rectangle. So go back to shapes and rectangle. And we're gonna draw in a rectangle that's a bit higher than that last one. So we're gonna draw that in and we want this one to have a good amount of width to it. The other poles in the middle will be slightly smaller. Then tap on your rectangle tool when you're done. And then zoom in, grab your eraser, go up to your tools, go to the option of, we wanna go ahead and make a selection. So we'll go across, we'll go to edit. We'll go ahead and grab the option here of poly. And we're gonna tap here on the left-hand side. We're then gonna tap in the very middle up here. And then we're gonna tap parallel to that one there, like so, creating a triangle. And then you should be able to draw around the outside area then, like I've just done. That way then, you should be able to go ahead and hit the tick at the bottom right, grab your eraser. If you have your eraser set to something pretty bold, such as calligraphy and the monoline brush, and just set it to a large size, it doesn't really matter. You're just erasing those corners off like so, and then you can tap on this red dot up here to cancel your selection. Then your post now should have a nice point on the end of it. Now with that done, we can go ahead and create another new layer. We'll go ahead and go back to our rectangle option under shapes and we're going to draw in some smaller poles now we just need to go ahead and make sure we're on our brush so we can draw in our rectangle like so and again we want them to be a little bit sort of uh, more narrow than the main pole there and then you should be able to when you're done tap away and tap on your rectangle and then we can go ahead and introduce it again now i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer because i want it to be exactly the same so i'm going to tap on the layer duplicate it I'm gonna go up to my tools and go to edit and transform and basic and just move that across, leaving a, a pretty consistent gap in between. And then hit the tick when I'm done, tap on it, duplicate it, go up to my edit and basic transform, move that across again. Don't worry about the gap on the left, we'll adjust that in a second. And we'll hit the tick. And I think we're gonna go ahead and tap on it and duplicate it again. Go up to our create options and edit basic transform and just move that across like so. Just make sure the gap in between is pretty consistent. Hit in the tick when you're done. Then tap on the top one and merge it down. So merge, tap, merge, tap, merge. So that all four of those lines are on the same layer. And then if you grab your create option and edit and basic transform, you can now move this a bit closer to your pole if you want, maybe even a slightly bigger gap in between here. Hit the tick. Then tap on this layer and duplicate it. Go to your create options and edit and basic transform. And then you've got another set of those and then we can move them across and hit the tick. Now at this point, you've got the basic shapes that you need in order to repeat this kind of process along. So what we'll do is we'll tap and merge all of the vertical lines into one. So you can see there, they're all merged. I don't wanna move the horizontal one yet because I might even move that slightly further down. So with that set, the only thing we wanna try and accommodate for at the minute is we're gonna have two birds that sit in the middle. So let's try and move this one by grabbing edit and basic transform and move it so that if we move it across to the right here, if I duplicate this again and add another main column here, they will roughly be in the same sort of position. They'll be somewhat kind of symmetrical. So if we hit the tick, we tap on this group and we duplicate it. We go up to edit, basic transform again, so there's a lot of moving and duplicating, I know. When you move that across, now our two birds should have a nice little space there to sit on that look fairly symmetrical to each other. It doesn't need to be, but it does look quite nice, doesn't it, when it's a little bit symmetrical. So we can hit the tick when we're done. Awesome. So that's the basic shapes of your fence. Now it's just a matter of duplicating this shape multiple times and moving it across. So you just duplicate it, you move it across, you make sure that the gaps are fairly even and consistent, hit the tick, then grab one of the main ones in the middle again, tap on that, duplicate it, and move it across. So sometimes when you've got very basic elements like this, you can just create them once and just move them, duplicate them. You don't need to draw it all out over and over and over again. 
it's one of the benefits and beauty of digital art really you can take advantage when you need to and hit the tick when you're done awesome you've got a nice little fence there that we can add our birds onto and it'll be nice and symmetrical as i mentioned so let's tap on all of the vertical lines and merge them all into one layer like so and then you can go ahead and grab your vert horizontal line and do you want to move that up and down i'm just going to take a quick look to see if it looks any better higher or lower nope i'm going to leave it as it is then and hit the tick when i'm done so i'll tap on that and merge it down and there we go we've got our fence now before we carry on i also want to introduce some hills that are going to sit in this gap so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tap on this layer i'm going to bring its opacity right down to around about five or six percent all we've done that for is so that we can just about see them so we can plan where our little hills are going to be in the distance so if you go too high and you go behind that column it might look a little bit odd but if we can get our mountains or hills even in this kind of gap here underneath that horizontal beam, then you should have some nice space to play with. So let's create a new layer, drag it underneath our fence. I'm going to go to my color and we've got this selection of blues over here, not this deep blue here, but we've got these lighter blues. We're going to go ahead and grab this one here. So it's the lightest of them all. We're going to go to our brush and go to the option of calligraphy and the monoline brush. My monoline brush, if I go to its settings, has around about 25% there on smoothing, as you can see. That just gets rid of a lot of the bumps and lumps in your line. And the brush size doesn't really matter, though I've got it set to 82. That's probably a little bit too big. Let's set that a little bit lower, about 23. And we're just going to draw in some very simple hillsides in the distance. So as things get further back, you should try and keep them really, really simple. So the first one we're drawing in, super simple. We just go then to our fill tool and we tap and drag to the right hand side just to fill that in and hit the tick when you're done. We then create a new layer again. We go to the next blue, which is this one here. We're then going to go ahead and draw in a, another set of hills. Now, can you go ahead and potentially let some of these ride a little bit higher than the one that we just drew? Or can you sort of lay out the foundations ready for your next hillside instead? So go to your fill option. Tap and drag in the bottom area to the right hand side just to make sure it's nice and full and hit the tick. Create another new layer. Go ahead and go to your colors again. Grab then this purple. It's like a lighter purple. You can see the difference between them. And then we're going to go ahead and go to our layer and just start drawing in another hillside. So can we maybe start off really high now on the right hand side? Bring in some of the, the nearby hills and then just let that run off. You don't have to make it symmetrical. You can go to your fill tool when you're done and tap and drag to the right hand side and hit the tick when you're done. Drag into the right hand side increases the threshold and therefore make sure that you get rid of any fuzzy line that may or may not show here. Now at this point you can move stuff up and down or you can simply leave it as you wish. One thing we are going to do though is we're going to tap on the far one at the back now. We're going to tap on it and we are going to add a uh, we're going to add an alpha lock to this layer. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab the pink tone here. So the light pink that we used in the background. We're going to go to our brush and we're going to go to the option of sprayers and a soft air brush is what you're going to need. And with that, I've got a size set to about 600. It's fairly large. I might have to go much smaller than that, probably around about 300. And just like before, my settings in terms of opacity and flow are the same. You can see I'm just drawing on that layer now in the distance and then in the gaps at the very bottom, I'm just adding in a very light bit of haze. And you can just fade the top out a bit more if you wish and then go up a layer so it's the next hillside tap on that add an alpha lock to that too and just add in a bit of a little bit of haze at the bottom of our little hills there and then this one here right in front of us we can tap on that we can tap on it we can lock it again and then we can increase the size of our brush probably up to around about five six hundred if not and then go left to right make sure the bottom area is nice and pink and then as you make your way up towards your your hills you can get really really faint if you wish and just leave them a bit more solid and we've got some hills in the distance now what we can do if you're concerned about your layers tap on this and merge it down and merge all three of those hills together if you want to alternatively before that you can go to edit and basic transform and move them around a little bit the only thing you can really do is move them down to reveal a little bit more but that's totally up to you now we're going to go to our fence, we're going to tap on it, and we're going to bring its opacity back up to 100% and now you should be able to see those hills in the distance rolling through our uh, fence. 
what we'll then do is we'll go ahead and start adding in new elements of silhouette to this as well. So we'll create a new layer. We'll go to our colors and grab the same purple as our fence, which is this one here, that deeper purple color. Let's go to our brush and let's go back into calligraphy and the monoline brush. It's my favorite. You can otherwise use the fill tool. It's totally up to you. And I'm going to come down here. I'm going to bring in like a bit of a mound in the middle. And then I'm going to go up on the left hand side. And then I'm going to grab my fill tool and tap and drag to the right hand side like so. And then hit the tick. So what we've done is we've introduced some land down here. Now while we're working in this area, let's go ahead and add in some plants and whatnot. So we'll create a new layer for our plants, just in case you want to move them around. I'm going to go ahead and use the soft taper. So that is under calligraphy and soft taper. It's just got a very thin end on it. And what it allows you to do is it allows you just to create flicks like this up and out. Now, just so you're aware, if I go to my settings, I've got smoothing set fairly high. I'm going to set it to about 50 though, just so I can get a bit more out of it. And then you can just flick out, create all these sharp points and just create a plant of some sort, a species of plant just in behind here. All from a central point. Don't be afraid to make it fairly large as well in terms of its sort of reach outwards. I'm going to try my best though to get rid of some of those gaps in the middle of it. I don't want the body of it to be kind of um, thin and see-through. I want that to be quite bold. We're working with silhouettes today, so you want to create something like this. Let's maybe then think about another one, maybe sort of up and over here, like another kind of leafy style plant. Blade like almost. There we go. A couple of thin tapers in there will look lovely. Make sure they go across as well, you know, really send some up and away like so maybe, if you want to be a bit more drastic. If you want to, you could always go ahead and set this brush really, really small, say down to 5%. If not slightly larger, let's go a bit bigger than that. It's even too small. Let's go up to about 13. And you could create blades of grass along here if you wanted to. It may take a little while to do with this particular brush, but it might look pretty good. We are going to introduce more elements in here, but this is just a tiny bit of extra sort of small detail in case you want to fill any gaps. So that's something you can do like so. Let's add in a bush in a bit more of a sort of leafy style aesthetic. So you could go to something, say, like the natural sponge under miscellaneous here. So the natural sponge. I'll create a new layer, and I've, we've got to do that on purpose. And with the brush size set to, what size is that? That's set to 55. Let's bring that down to 40 and just create a, a rounded shape here. Don't worry about all the colors that it makes. We're just creating like a bit of a, a bushy kind of, a very simple kind of bushy shape to this. A bit of a simple bush like shape. There we go, that looks cool. And can we maybe create like another one maybe here as well? We want to make sure this does look like a garden of some sort. Now we've put it on a separate layer on purpose because this does have different hues of color in here as you can see. So we need to tap on this layer and alpha lock it so we can't paint outside of what's already on that layer. And if we go to our brush and we go to the option of sprayers again, so we can always go back into sprayers and the soft airbrush, it's always my favorite. You can just then go ahead and just cover it in. You may have to go over it a couple of times, just keep tapping away, and you should then be able to fill it in enough that you get rid of all those random little hues in there. Now, as I mentioned, you can also add in those blades of grass over and over again if you want with the soft taper brush. So soft taper, probably around about say 20 now. I can add in some blades of grass maybe, maybe even pointing down. This seems to look a little bit better actually with this brush by facing it downwards. Lovely, a little bit of grass in there. Couple of little extra blades. You can even run some blades through um, this large fluffy bush. Maybe it's just certain, maybe it's two plants growing right next to each other. You can have some fun with it, but as long as you create some greenery like area down here, you're all good to go. Let's go ahead and create another new layer and introduce a tree. I'm gonna set the size to a little bit larger just to start with around about 37 now. And starting over here on the left hand side, I'm gonna go ahead and draw in a a wiggly line and then a branch line and just allow that to go all the way up and over the top maybe just to give some nice framing effects and then go all the way along like so and this brush does have a somewhat uh, animated aesthetic to it in Infinite Painter where the end it really wants to thin it out and it actually animates the brush as you're adding in um, all the little areas so let's just flush out our little branches here 
adding in this beautiful brush. It's a fantastic brush. Lots of, again, animation in it, but it just always wants to have that fantastic little taper on the end. And we're going to utilize it not only for um, the branches, but we're going to introduce it for the leaves as well. So you'll be able to have a good old play with it in this one. We're going to come across there and then maybe this is our trunk here. Maybe we come up and out and then we come back in again and create another branch that runs along here. Overlapping trees and branches is so important. It creates all the depth to a tree because trees just don't you know, get out of each other's way. They typically will get in each other's way in terms of branches in some aspects. And you can do exactly that as well. So we can add in bumps and lumps as well to the tree, you know, making sure you're your tree's not super perfect and clean, or maybe that's the aesthetic you do want. Maybe you do want to smooth out some of these lines. And we're just making sure we add in a good amount of branches in here. And then you just want to set the brush size to something a bit smaller. Let's go for something, say 14%. And then you just want to sort of drag down in certain areas just to create um, the illusion of leaves in here. So maybe my brush is a little bit too small. Let's go up to say 20, and then I can just add in little areas here of leaves and you can just create little sort of flows off like this almost like to keep it very simple they're almost like banana style shapes aren't they you can just create little twisting shapes you can start outside the uh the actual branch and then make your way in and you can curve them out as well you can create all sorts and you don't have to fill in the whole thing either we're just trying to create like a very thin um you know quite a um quite a sort of skinny tree really we're not trying to add in too much density to it we're just trying to create interesting little leaves off of here keeping it very minimal very kind of simple minimalistic though lovely do you know what i might even fix that i might grab my eraser grab something like um the monoline brush and i'll just get rid of a few of those there compared to the rest this is far too dense and sometimes i keep things like this in the video because then you can make sure that you don't do the same or maybe you may want to now take a look and see if yours matches up to the issue that I'm having and therefore you can fix that as well. Sometimes it's very much a process where if it's just going to be too much to fix, you can just get rid of it completely. Take that off. I'll take that off of there. I'll go back with my soft taper and make the brush size a little bit bigger like it was before. And then I'll just run that through there and just try and just keep that line going a little bit more like so. And then I've hopefully now hidden that a little bit more. So I'm going to go back down to the, about the 20 mark and keep going through this tree, introducing little leaves here and there. And maybe there's another branch or branch, another brush that you like the look of for this kind of thing. So by all means, change it if you want to. You don't have to always follow me. If you've got a, an alternative that you really, really like the look of for something like this, please, by all means, do that instead. Um, you can leave some of these leaves as well with little gaps in between. They always look really cool because then you don't need to see the teeny tiny little sort of stem of it. You can just create the leaves all flowing off from a certain point and your mind kind of fills the gap. You know, we've, we've all seen trees before. We can gauge what that is by looking at it and try it. Okay, I can fill in the gap. Not too big of a gap, mind. You know, some of those that I just created a second ago had massive gaps on them. And you can create a few more in the body of the tree. I wouldn't go too mad with it, but just enough like so. And then if you want to, to save yourself some time, you can tap on the tree. You can duplicate it. You can go to your cursor and go to edit and basic transform. If you then flip it horizontal, move it over to the right hand side. You can then go ahead and make a decision. Do you want to scale this up in size so that it's a little bit different to the one over there? Do you want to move it out of frame a little bit more as well? You can hit the tick when you're done. And then you want to make the decision, do you need to get rid of any branches up here? So I do. I want to get rid of the branches that overlap each other and sort of get very, very close. Now, I don't mind them necessarily getting close because it adds a really lovely frame to our design. So I'll leave it like that. And then I'll just make adjustments to the one on the right hand side. So maybe I'll zoom in and maybe I'll just try and create additional branches that are a little bit different. So sometimes, again, you can get away with just creating a duplicate and then just making it ever so slightly different enough that your mind can't see the reflection. If your mind can't see it 
straight away, you've done it. You've done a perfect job of reflecting. And I think mine does exactly that. Now we do have another element to create and that's a couple of birds. They're really easy to draw, I promise you. So let's create a new layer. Let's go ahead and go to our brush. Let's make sure we're using the monoline brush. We can set the size to something maybe around about say 20 points and we can zoom in. And on this layer, we wanna go ahead and draw in an ellipse. So we draw in an ellipse, we hold our pen down, a little something like that. And then you wanna go ahead and draw in a head. Hold your circle down, pop a finger on the screen in some apps if needs be to draw in a perfect circle, not an ellipse. You can always tap up here to edit the shape. So I can go ahead and just scale that out like so. And I can scale it down. And we wanna create a head like this. Then all you need to do is just connect the back of the head into the back. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and make my brush size a bit smaller because that one was a little bit too big. You then wanna curve the chest up and in, into the neck, into the head as well. And then very simply just create like a little bit of a beak on the front. That's all we wanna do for today's design. You don't need to overthink it. You can keep it really, really small. You can even go ahead and once you've sort of drawn this in, if you're not happy with the point on the end, a bit like me, you can always grab your eraser. If you're using the monoline brush, you can chop that off so that you end up with a bit more of a point. Totally up to you, totally optional. Just make sure you've got nice tidy lines everywhere. So just make sure that they run into each other nice and tidy like so. And then grab your fill tool, tap and drag in those areas to get rid of the, the fuzzy line, tap and drag into the right hand side when we do that. Hit the tick when you're done. Of course, a bird needs some wings. So let's go back to our brushes and tap on it and use the soft taper brush that we used before. Let's try and make that size a bit bigger, maybe around about 30. And you want to sort of come down the back there until you create two wings, a little something like that. Now, mine are a little bit too small because my bird's a little bit larger. I am going to scale this down in a second, but you should then end up with two wings on the back. The other thing you can do is just go over the top of the head on the back there and create like a little sort of um, little bit of feather there on the back of the head just to make sure it's not so round and boring. And those wings, you can always redo them multiple times if you want to. The other thing you can do is if you grab your bird and go to edit and transform, I just need to move it up a tiny bit to here. So I want to just draw in some simple little feet. They're just going to be little sort of curves. They're little C shapes. That's all they are. If I turn off my fence, you can see what they actually look like, but they just look like enough that you can connect the two together. And then maybe just round that off. Now my wings definitely need a little bit of more uh, solidness to them, I think. That will do. And then from there, we can go ahead and duplicate this. We can tap on it, we can duplicate it. We can grab the top one, go to our cursor and go to edit and basic transform. If we flip it horizontally, so using that icon there, move it across and we scale it down in size. We can maybe have a slightly smaller one. Maybe it's a female at this point maybe and hit the tick when you're done. And we've got two little birds sat on our fence. Now there's other things we could create. We could create a new layer. We could go to our brush again using the soft taper. And maybe we create some kind of vines in here. This may look a little bit untidy. It's totally up to you if you wanna introduce them. So starting at the top, I'm just gonna create like curving shapes all the way down here and then wrap our vines round maybe like so, up and round like this, and then maybe even create some little leaves off of there as well, just to create some, again, more interesting levels of detail to it. That's just something else we can introduce. And let's maybe, while we're here, introduce a couple more blades in this corner here, just to sort of solidify that corner a bit more. Maybe we'll bring in the tree a little bit more. I know I'm doing this all on one layer and that's perfectly fine, because at this point we're just a matter of just framing our design a little bit better. Yeah, maybe just bringing in the tree a little bit on either side, just a little bit more. Again, just for framing purposes, turn off your grid when you're done. And if you want to, as I mentioned, you could introduce some clouds in the background. So just go down to where your sun is, create a new layer, go to your colors and grab the light color that we used for the sun. And then you could use the soft taper where you start off really, really thin, and then you draw in some rounded shapes like so. So going around fluffy shapes and then let that get really thin on the end. You can do the same over here. So like something like this, rounded circles and then just nice and thin on the end. Run your pen through that. These are always the clouds I create. 
where they've got a bit of a kind of flat edge to them. I really love the aesthetic of this style. And then maybe a couple of little sort of streaks underneath will look really nice. And you can always run a streak through the bottom. Like so, you can even create some mini ones in the distance if you want to. And I'll go ahead and draw one more in. So I'm gonna draw in a large one at the top, like so, and I'll just draw in a straight line and then a wobbly line over the top of it. And then I'll grab my create options and fill and tap and drag in that space like so and hit the tick when I'm done. And then just like your son, grab your eraser, make sure your eraser is set to the option of sprayers and the soft airbrush. Set the size to something manageable, maybe around about say 200. And we just go along the bottom of those clouds, we'll get rid of the bottom edge of them, just fading them out just enough that you leave the top a little bit brighter. And then just fade out the bottom. There we go. And then that way they just nicely fade into our sky. You haven't added any detail that wasn't necessary. That's why we did it towards the end of the design. And when you're done, you should be able to pinch with two fingers and go full screen with four, and you end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, make sure to tag me in your finished creations wherever you decide to share them, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere else. I'm pretty much everywhere. And a massive thank you to all of the members of the channel who help make these videos possible. If you want to support the channel and the work that I do here, as well as get early access to these tutorials, you can support the channel by becoming a member. You get a loyalty badge beside your name that grows over time and potentially more exclusives to come in the future. But thank you to every single one of my members on the channel. It means a lot to me. And if you like this video here on YouTube, you'll love this one on the screen now. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.